Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I'm Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, it has happened. The time has come. The time is nigh. The return of bullet points is here. Now, as you guys know, we always hit these opinion pieces from the leftist gun control side because it, number one, shows you where their head's at. Number two, makes how easy it is to refute their points. And in some cases, show their little tricks to the trade of what they're doing. And that's exactly what we're going to cover here. Now, Gabby Giffords, this is like one of the queens of gun control, right up there with Shannon Watts. She penned an article in the Washington Post, it's an opinion piece, and it's all about appealing to the reasonable side of the argument around how violence is bad against politicians, which, of course, it is. But the way in which she twists it is she utilizes the stabbing of the UK parliamentarian into gun violence, but I want to show you how this works, and I'm going to refute it right on the right on the cuff here. So let's dive in. It's linked in the description box below, as usual, and I want to hear what you guys think, because I know how much you guys like bullet points. So, let's dive in. All right. Here's the opinion piece title. Gabby Giffords, again, gun control queen. The stabbing of a British MP is another example of how violence eats away at democracy, which violence is a cancer to democracy. It is. She is not wrong, but this is one of the important pieces because gun controllers, the talented ones, always start from a position of reason and then slowly transition in their, their extreme ideas. Check it out. I'm going to show you this in real time. Okay. So the first thing she sets up is her own experience. For years, one of my favorite things about serving in Congress was getting the opportunity to interact with my constituents. I love chatting with them about our beloved state of Arizona and the policies I was fighting for. Even when we disagreed, we did so respectfully. We found common ground without vilifying each other, which was right around the Obama era, so this is right at the beginning of the vilification of each other. When I heard the, uh, that a conservative member of parliament, David Ames, was stabbed to death in Britain this month while meeting with constituents, I was hor horrified and heartbroken. Now, that's the British guy who died from knife violence in Britain, the place where there's gun control. Keep that in mind. A mess, no, let's just say mess. A mess was doing exactly what I was doing on that day near Tucson, listening, connecting, but he paid for his public service with his life, which is terrible. No one should have to do this. This is not public, healthy discourse, right? So that's what she's doing. She's setting it up from a standpoint of meeting constituents and democracy should not be solved by violence, which we all agree. For the most part, we all agree, okay? And this is where she starts to incorporate some common things, and this is where the twist happens. Keep in mind, she started with the meeting with democracy and constituents, uh, going to the uh, recent event in Britain, and now look what she's doing to turn. As I write this, five men are awaiting trial for plotting to kidnap mission governor Gretchen Whitmer last fall. Okay, that's a little bit of a far cry from a stabbing to a attempted plot. But keep going, check out. And this is where we start to get the transition and the turn. There should not be a before and an after for elected officials. I completely agree. There shouldn't be. Like there is for Whitner, Whitmer and like there is for me. Putting your name on the ballot should not mean a comment you make or a vote you take may lead someone threatening your life or even worse, acting on that threat. Again, completely agree. And this is where that she's built up this case of consensus where everyone agrees with these basic broad norms. But this is where she turns it on its head and basically makes gun violence incorporated into an argument that it wasn't in its place. Check it out. The first thing that she does, she states, she cites some statistics, which I'm not going to show you because it's just kind of bunk. But it's like all these elected officials are subject to threats. And then she hits this one. If more guns made people safer, as the gun lobby claims, we would have much less gun violence in other developed nations, such as the United Kingdom. Instead, we have much more. What she fails to mention is the United Kingdom is the highest of knife violence in the entire world. You go back to those uh, FBI statistics we just covered last week, there was a 100% increase in knife, fist, and other types of crime where guns were not present. The tool does not matter. We've covered that ad nauseum. But she's going straight after the, well, he was stabbed, so gun control is important in the United States. Do you see how, how it's kind of a convoluted twist? But she still arrives where she wants to, and they always do this, the talented ones. And this is the part that drives me insane. If more of the insurrectionists who stormed the U.S. Capitol had been armed on that event in January, I fear the outcome could have been much worse than it was. The district's relatively strong gun laws played, likely played a role in limiting the firearms brought into the Capitol. And here's what I want to hit on. Notice the words she used. If more people had firearms, it likely could have led to more violence. So those are two completely questionable statements. Not if it's based in fact, based in conjecture. 
but she's passing off as fact. Then she puts it as, well, Washington, D.C. has a lot of gun control, so therefore, gun control prevented armed insurrection. So, let me just... So people in your hypothetical here, people were storming a, storming a situation. They were taking over an entire capital of the United States, and they stopped and went, you know what? Storming a capital is not breaking the law, but gun violence would be breaking a law, so I'm not going to take my gun because there's gun laws, but I can storm the capital. It doesn't make sense on any logical level, but they're playing on emotion. It's all about the if, and it likely could have, but it never did, but it could have, so you never know. It all goes back to that couching the entire world in an envelope of safety. We'll protect you. We're the government. It's worked out really well for Australia, hasn't it? And that's what I've got for you on the first bullet points in a while. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. This is Braden, signing out.